The second type of file format that I would like you to export to is a print file for, uh, sorry, a print PDF. So when you choose to file export and you're going to export to a PDF, there's actually two options. There is print PDF and there is an interactive PDF and we will cover both in this class. We just won't cover the interactive one until the very end of the semester. Our last project, Project 11, will be an interactive PDF portfolio of the work that you created throughout the semester. A PDF in general is a portable document format. It is a universal or standard file format that is capable of storing high resolution print quality images. If you choose the print option, if you choose interactive, it's going to downsample your images and it's going to try to make a small file size. Uh, what is great about a PDF, whether it's a print PDF or an interactive PDF, is that it is a universal or standard file format. Anybody you give that file to can open it. Now, if you're working in InDesign and you wanted to give someone your file to show them what you're working on, they would only be able to open it if they have InDesign. But if they don't have InDesign and you still want them to see what you're working on, maybe you have a client who is like, I need you to do the design work. I know nothing about design. I just want to see the end result. You can't give them InDesign files if they don't have InDesign. But you could save a copy as a print PDF and you could send them that file and then they can open that file. Um, so why would I want to use a print PDF? Well, in general, we're going to send commercial printers one of a very limited number of files. So we're either going to send them properly packaged InDesign projects, so a folder that we create. You can send them Quark files, which I will talk about in the next lecture, not, not this one. Um, or you can send them high resolution print PDFs and they can print from those files. And so um, it would be good to be able to send them a file that's ready to go and ready to print. To do this, you're going to choose File, Export, and then choose Adobe PDF with the print in parentheses. When you do this and you hit Save, make sure you always expand that dialog box and choose a name, a location, and a, a format. Um, if you are packaging your project, package it first, and then when you export to your print PDF, just drop the file into the package folder. It's okay to add more stuff just don't delete stuff from the package. And when you hit save, you'll get a dialog box that looks fairly familiar. Um, it looks similar to the print dialog box that we talked about in great detail. Now, we're not going to talk about this one in great detail just yet, but I would like to point out that in the bottom, not the bottom, on the left-hand side, there are tabs. And you can click through the tabs and you can read the settings, but the one that I'm concerned about right now is the Marks and Bleeds tab. And if you click on the Marks and Bleeds tab, just like you can do in the print dialog box, you can include all printer's marks, which is what I would like you to do if the requirement says that. And I would always like you to include to use the document bleed setting. When you select this, it should match your document. Now, all documents that you create or you are given in our class should always have standard printing bleeds, which are 0.125 or 1 8 of an inch. And so when you select this checkbox here that says use document bleed settings, the bleed area should go gray so you can't edit it. And the top, bottom, inside, and outside should be 0.125 inches. If you do that and it does not say 0.125 inches, you have not set up proper printing bleeds on your project. The last file format that I would like you to export to, well, there's really two and they they're kind of go hand in hand, are JPEG and PNG files. And I'd actually prefer you to start exporting to PNG files, um, but they're done the same way. So a JPEG file stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. It is a universal or a standard file format that anyone can open on any device. It is also a web file format, and so the file size would be really small. And so a print PDF is going to have a much higher file size than a JPEG because the goal of a print PDF is to contain as much data as possible. But the goal of a JPEG or a PNG file is to get a small file size because it's meant to be displayed on the web. And so if you're having trouble sending someone files and they just want to see what it looks like, you could export file export to a JPEG or file export to a PNG file. And either one of those would have much smaller file sizes than a print PDF. The downside of web file formats is that they do not um, accept multiple pages. So if you have an eight page document and you choose file export to a JPEG or file export to a PNG file, you will not get one JPEG that has eight pages in it. You will get eight individual JPEGs. So keep that in mind. For your first project, what I want you to do is recognize that that's going to happen. And I would like you to create a folder that says JPEGs. And so all the JPEGs go into the same folder. Okay. 
that wraps up our first lecture. So the very next video, I'm going to start walking through the process of completing assignment one, printing, packaging, and exporting. I think it would actually be a good idea if you try the project before watching my videos just to see how much of it, it makes sense and how much you've kind of absorbed so that you can focus on what you're lacking. Um, but if you want to, you can just jump right into the next video and you can walk along with me to do the project. Um, keep in mind that I'm not going to walk through every single project all semester, and so you may have to reference this, so keep in mind the number of the video. I think this is going to be video 11. You might want to write that down so that when you go to do project 2 and you have to pre-flight package export your project, and I haven't specifically walked through that part of the project with you, you could come back and reference this. Um, the first couple times you go through this process, it's going to take a while and it's going to be long and it's going to kind of be exhausting. But you should get to a point where everything that we just covered in the last hour of me talking should take you five minutes at the end of every project. Um, once you get to that point, you should feel confident that you're kind of getting used to InDesign and you're really jumping in and getting your feet wet.